All right, this is the um, September, I don't believe, September 4th meeting of the Conway Select Board. Summer is over. No. All the fun no. is over. No, no, no. <laughs> uh, all right, Tom. Is, um, <laughs> Three more weeks. <laughs> okay. I, I know, yeah. Summer doesn't doesn't end until the 23rd. So you got so we got more we days. Got like a, like several okay. more days. So we're being uh, videoed by... Uh, Frontier Community Access Television uh, for viewing later by our residents and the general public. Okay, we have uh, the first two items on the agenda are minutes for August the 19th. Has anybody, um, has everybody reviewed those minutes? They look yes. great. We also had another set of minutes. We're, 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 oh, okay. Easy, okay. easy, okay. easy. <laughs> okay. Everybody reviewed the 19th? Yes. No changes or additions? Really okay, great. I'll make a motion that we approve those minutes. Second. Do I have a second? All in favor? Yes. Okay. All right, we also have minutes for um, the 27th. Have we reviewed those minutes? Is everybody satisfied with those minutes? Yes. Yeah. I'll make a motion that we approve those minutes. Do we have a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Yes. Okay. All right, next item on the agenda, we have three uh, warrants. We have a, uh, a vendor warrant for $26,697, a payroll warrant for $86,490, and a payroll deduction warrant of $22,388. I'll make a motion that we approve those warrants. Do I have a second? Second. All in favor? Yes. Aye. Okay. Meetings attended by select board members. Bill? Um, yeah, just a, just a short meeting in preparation for the resumption of uh, union contract negotiations. Oh. <coughs> Which <coughs> commence tomorrow, once again. This time under state mediation, so. Okay. Mm -hmm. So I had a CONCOM meeting last week, uh, but CONCOM's very quiet right now. For the, actually, about the first time all, you know, all summer, it was, it was a very, you know, it, it, it was a busier summer than we were expecting. So, uh, and, uh, and we had an MVP meeting last week where we met with FERCOG and went over our MVP priorities. Okay, okay I had one, I had, any other meetings? No. I had one meeting, as a matter of fact, it was today, it was with the, uh, Massachusetts Municipal Association Personnel and Fair Labor Relations Committee. Um, and I, I'm just amazed at, at um, how good things are here in Conway. We are close to utopia in personnel matters compared to some of these, um, these towns' experiences. So I, every time I go to one of those meetings, I, I come back very you are knocking on wood somewhere when you give that report, right? <laughs> Mike. Yeah. Say thank you, Tom. And mm -hmm. managing our this, this is great yeah. compared to some of the problems out there. So, let's, do we have any public comments? I don't see any public here except Lee, and Lee is actually our assessor, so it's not really the public, <laughs> so we're going to skip that. Next is our next AM proposal discussion with. Roy Bishop Roy is not here. I was going to say we do. Is there are we, expe are we expecting? Like yes. Okay. Yes. All right. So we'll just we'll we just um, reconfirm just a few days ago and the time and all. Okay. So we I expect him. We confirmed today. Did you? This morning. Ah. All right. So we'll Does just. Does he think we're over there? Oh golly. I'll just put my head up and then you can start. Okay. We'll uh, we'll wait mm. on Roy. Next item on the agenda under new business is Chapter 90, uh, the request for reimbursement for Hoosack Road. As you know, we have paved Hoosack Road uh, after milling it at the, uh, at the was it beginning of this year, right? We milled Hoosack Road, or was it at the end of last year? But anyway, all right, we have uh, repaved Hoosack. It looks fine. Uh, we just need to um, basically approve our reimbursement from um, MassDOT. I think it's uh, approving our request for reimbursement. Yeah. I wish we could just approve our reimbursement. Well, yeah. Request for reimbursement. I vote for yes. <laughs> <laughs> and we're getting all 
all of our funds back. We spent almost $170,000 on the paving of Hussack Road, uh, and we're in good shape on that. So I will um, make a motion that we sign this request prepared by our highway superintendent for reimbursement of funds, uh, Chapter 90 funds for Hussack Road. Do I have a second? Yes. All in favor? Yes. Aye. Okay. Can we say no to that? Yeah, anytime the state wants to give us money, it's fine. You know, it's, it's just super. Just giving us our money back, just a small portion of it. Well, yeah, essentially that's what it is. Yeah, but you know, let's let's you know look at it a little bit more you know, happier than that. Okay. A little bit happier. Than that. <laughs> <laughs> it is. It's all state of mind. You're right, John. <laughs> You know, it's, it's our allocation. We're getting our allocation. And we need three signatures, so we need one more. Are you signed in both places? No, yeah, we're signed in both places. Yeah. Okay, next item on our agenda is the transfer remaining, we're going to transfer remaining funds and accounts. Uh, 122-5800 elderly housing, 700, uh, five, 475 dollars, and from 225850, the batch elder property, 2,000 dollars to general fund. Uh, we discussed this um, last week, and we approved. <coughs> um, I'll make a motion that we approve the transfer of remaining funds in those accounts. I have a second. Second. Any questions? Or yeah, what are those accounts? What's that? What are those accounts? Those accounts, it's an elderly housing account, and it's the batch elder property account. Okay, we just have an excess in that elderly housing account, and we have an excess in the batch elder property account. Remember yeah. what happened with the batch elder property? We were going to purchase that piece across the street, that little triangle. And uh, unfortunately, the state would not uh, release the lien on the property, which is a $38,000 lien. So we weren't going to buy it with the, relief, with the lien on the property. Huh. So that kind of fell through. And that's, that's got to be six years ago now? Yeah, and the other one, I think, is even, even yeah, it's older. Old, older. I think it's about 2010. It was a town meeting. Vote. What was the basis of the lien? Pardon me for being a, a, an inquiry. The what? The basis of the lien for being an inquiry. It was a medical resident. lien. Oh. Okay. Yeah. That was on the property, and um, yeah. very common. You know, we wanted to uh, to get that property. Um, and the state just wouldn't release the mm -hmm. lien. So okay, so take the fifteen that the hundred dollar property and keep the thirty eight thousand dollar lien on it. Maybe, <coughs> I was like, going to say they may hello? think it's. They may think it's quite different from what it actually is. And has it sold well, since then? Uh, they, I'm sure. I'm sure they they yeah. know they know the size of the property and they know yeah. the assessment on the property. It's like you know. Yeah. So it's they, just sitting there, and it'll it'll sit okay. there. Suitable for a large picnic. Okay. Uh, well, that's about yeah. That's yeah. About what we were going to do with it was yeah. basically you know do little things All for right. the town. Then I vote yes. I think that makes it unanimous. Okay. You were good now. Yes. All okay. right. So we're transferring yes. those funds. All right. Next item is to approve the use of a $2,952.54 surplus bond proceeds from the annual town meeting of 4-12-2010, over nine years ago. Article 4 to be applied to the fiscal uh, 2019 debt service for the school roof project with school roof? All in accord uh, with uh, Massachusetts General Law 44, Chapter 44, Section 20. What school roof are we referring to? Conway. So we're still paying off a debt for the school roof? So this yeah. will just pay off part of that debt? So we're just transferring from one account yeah. to another. This was a request from our accountant to help clean up those accounts. I'll make that motion. Do I have a second? All in favor? Yes. Okay. Uh, next item is to approve the design proposal for the town lift. Tom, you want to tell us a little about this? Yeah, so we got two proposals 
Uh, one of them came in significantly more expensive than the other. In fact, so much so that we can't uh, actually accept it. Right. Uh, the other one did come in within our uh, spending limit. It does include we, funds. We had a fifteen thousand dollars spending yeah. limit for that. Okay. Yeah, and it, it does include funds for construction oversight should that happen. Right. Okay. So uh, it's complete, and uh, both parties came and and looked at the place, and okay. um, they uh, they think it's doable, and they think they can do it. Uh, there, it, there's some question of whether or not all the elements can be completed in time to submit a grant proposal for this year's Mass Office on Disability Grants, okay. uh, but it's still possible at this point. So, okay, all right. So, has everybody had a chance to look this proposal over? Yeah, I would have hoped to have been able to question the uh, designer. Um, Because it just every, everything I read just brought up a whole lot more questions. Like to what end? Like what's what's the next step? To what end? How is funding the lift and constructing? <coughs> Woods has to go before the, the voters before we can start that or, or even put that out for bid. Uh, yeah, it'll require further appropriation of funds certainly, and the town meeting is the one that does that. So <coughs> why do a design this far out from town meeting? Uh, yeah. because we need to know how much it's going to cost to apply for the grant that will let us know whether or not that's what I wanted to question to the, 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 yeah. the designer about no that that's that's a that's that's my bailiwick if we can if we can get it designed now we can apply for this year's funding the funding gets announced in August it's due in October so if we can do the design now We'll know how much it costs, then we can uh, apply for a grant for 60% of that money. And if we get the grant, which will be announced maybe in January, we'll be able to go forward and ask <coughs> the rest of the money, the 40%, to match the grant to do the construction. Um, yeah, I didn't see any of that in, in, in the, the report. No, that's not in the design. That, that's the plan that I've been presenting consistently as I've been trying to bring this project forward. Was there an end date when they were going to have it done? Again, we're hoping to have it done by the time the, uh, the grant proposals are due in October. The only... I, um, I just didn't see an end date. No. I don't know if I missed it. But. No, but again, they're saying some of it depends on their cost estimator, um, but they can have the the design stuff. They can easily have the design stuff done by then. So they're they work with partners. So that so what's on them. what's the what's the construction estimate? What's the total amount? What's the cost? What are the numbers? That's we, what we, this we, study we is going to tell us. That is the purpose of this study is to tell us that number. And the per this just has the cost we, we, of we the won't design. know the cost of the construction until we do the design. That, um, that's the purpose of the design is to come up with the cost for construction, as well as the design itself. But they have to know what it's going to be in order to know how much it's going to cost. And they have to be able to know parameters of what different things would cost in general. And so that, that that's there has to be some sort of knowledge about what the numbers are to some extent. I'm not holding you to anything. I'm just saying what's What's the estimate? Oh yeah, the the um, the lift itself would be about eighty thousand dollars, probably. Could be anywhere from, could be more or less depending on the capacity that they end up recommending. Um, and then there's then there's labor and materials. And then, I mean, is to to what like. The, the one thing that we heard from town meeting is people saying we're still going to be able to use this for the rag shag parade, right? And I don't know if anybody ever got a direct answer on that, and that was my question as well. If like, it gets, if it gets, um, eventually, if there's a major town hall renovation, no, then it would be a smaller, there would be smaller rooms. There wouldn't be one big room. That, if that's, that is um, uh, a further thing to be discussed. Right now, we're just making the second hall accessible. 
I would hope to come forward with a proposal in which, you know, we could weigh, you know, giving the town staff decent office space against having a rag shack parade once a year, and I think my views on that are clear, but that's a debate that would happen in that town, in town meeting. You know, do you want to, you want this project to move forward or not? But people flat out asked that, and they, their question was ignored. And I, I wonder if the vote would have been as positive if, uh, um, no, that, I, that, 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 I, that, that, I have, that question had been answered. I have always been clear that, that um, I hope to bring forward a proposal to renovate the upstairs of town hall into offices. I, I, I believe yeah. I said that at town yeah, meeting, we, we, and we've, I've, we've been, I've said it publicly many times. We have, we've been talking about that for quite a few years now. And the first step in that is to design is, is the design of a lift so that it is you know, in accordance with uh, uh, the Disabilities Act so that handicapped people don't have to walk upstairs or take a lift up to the second floor. Yeah. That's what makes that that's what makes that second floor basically renovatable is the fact that we would have a lift. It would make it usable for public functions. Yeah. The only public function that we do, we you intend not. All right. Um, well, <coughs> people that are handicapped can't get up there now. It would be usable for, for any the public function of visiting the town offices. That's that's no. well. That's or essentially the if there were another be. meeting, like the uh, MMA legislative breakfast or something like that. You know, there are uh, One many reasons be. for making a large town space able to be used for a town function. One committee already meets up there, uh, or cannot meet up there, because one of the regular members is handicapped. And so they come and meet downstairs in and order to It's not legal for them that. to meet there anyway. Right, right. So, but uh, <clears throat> so, uh, there's room there a step towards to move several of the offices yeah. from here, make them more private. We did a major study uh, a few years ago mm -hmm. um, and identified a lot of things about the town that need improvement. There are going to be more improvements to town hall based on the, the money that's left over from the, the grant for the uh, bathroom there. Um, Ron's planning to put in, for instance, doors to open automatically. Um, how, how would you like to be working in, in the middle office here, this particular desk, for example? and constantly having traffic through between you and your colleague. No doors that you can shut. You no and, place and where you uh, can talk to a... Residents talking a residence. about uh, their, their tax payment plan. That's, that's right. Why they can make to, this you, and They can't talk that. privately with someone mm. who wants to discuss their finances. Anyone using the building or this floor goes in there right two feet from you to go to the bathroom. It's, it's a difficult situation. Not an ideal setup. No. And we do have space to do differently. I have to commend the town staff for uh, working in, in the building and making it work as best as they can. Which, which they do a remarkable job. Absolutely. Yes. Yeah, they do a remarkable Absolutely. job. Yeah. Hallways weren't in commercial buildings to the 1890s. That's right. And that was set up to be the private office for the bank That's president. an interesting fact. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Yeah. Now, back to the design. It wasn't a hallway until we added the back room. Yeah. That's right. Now back to the design. Okay. So, are you clear on why we're doing this? Yeah. Um, to me, the, sorry, the, the rag and shag thing is, is really key to, uh, it's, I, it's a know, key event I, in the it, life it, of the town. It, it's a, it's and, a great and, event for and, town. And, and the intent, if the, and, and the intent to, throw that out of the building is uh, not something I support. And, and we couldn't have that on the first floor. Well, it's not big enough, but, but you know, it, it, it's, a, it's an important event for town, but it's also important for us to, to use that space to the best, and uh, the highest and best uses we can for, for the town. And, you know, unfortunately, the, the Rag Shack Parade would have to be sacrificed, or could we just move somewhere else, like the yeah. school gymnasium? You know? Yeah. You know? Um, yeah, since that the thing would cease to exist if it doesn't take place there. Or perhaps the new church. Are they going to have a yeah, when they common room the down, downstairs? Sure. Yeah. So I you know, I, I I understand your position, but when you when you weigh the two things, you know, you it's 
kind of obvious which one we should go with. And I'm, you know, to, to me, we, the, the <coughs> ha having the t um, town administrator, any town administrator, being the not just the point person, but the entire person, the entirety of the supervision of it, um, is just not the not the way to go. That these these things need a citizen panel, a citizen committee, to be doing it. Um, we well, right now we're studying the design for a lift. We're not talking about renovating the town hall. I would certainly hope that we would have a committee talking about that. But we're going to pay fifteen thousand, which only makes sense if we're going to pay a hundred eighty thousand. And um, well, town meeting did approve the fifteen thousand. Did to make the upstairs accessible, and that's the what's currently before us. So I'll, I'll make a motion that we um, approve the proposal from Stevens Associates for a design study for a lift for the town hall. Do I have a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. I am any not, I any am opposed? Being, I am opposed to this. Okay. Um, all right. So we'll note your opposition. Uh, okay. I'm surprised that one of these was so much higher. You know, I don't know if they didn't want the work or, or what. Uh, they came in higher on an earlier proposal they'd made mm -hmm. on a different project for the town as well. They also <laughs> recommended the, uh, the team that's actually doing it. Oh. <laughs> they, they, uh, they know each other very you, well. Yeah, uh, I, I yeah. Okay, I, I won't. I won't say the universe that way. Right, yeah. Roy wasn't over across the street. No. no. Hmm. Do you have his phone number? Do you think he thought it was that six? No, we no. made it quite clear. Uh -huh. It was you I confirmed with this morning. Mm -hmm. Sorry, yes. it wasn't him. Yeah. Well, we confirmed with him on Thursday, I think. Yeah. yeah. Well, he may have had something un unexpected happen. They do. There's construction on 91, but it doesn't slow things down that right. much. <coughs> Phil, I wonder if a big tent could be put up at some little central location. I'm thinking of the, at the festival, the tent that has the Conway Cafe and everything in it, plus, you know, a great big one. Where there'd be room to sit down, plus room to have the parade and everything, and okay, that well, that, that sounds good. That sounds good. <laughs> okay. It doesn't sound now. good, but maybe there are other possibilities. Okay, let's go to the next AM proposal. Let's go. Yep. Do you want to tell us about this, Lee? Well, uh, our 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 consultant, Roy Bishop of Bishop uh, and Associates, down in Agawam is a very experienced appraiser of solar project projects um, has done i safe to say dozens of them in massachusetts as well as uh, helping towns write pilot programs being the precise industry that it is it is almost impossible for a town team of assessors to value it by either the income process or the cost of construction process. Uh, I say it by the cost or by the replacement process, I should say. Mm -hmm. It should be valued on an income basis. However, doing that can give a quite variable stream of income over the years. By creating a pilot agreement, payment in lieu of taxes, we agree not to tax them on the regular tax roll, but instead to come up with a formula for 20 years, at the beginning of, as soon as the, the uh, project goes into operation, that gives a predictable line of expenditure for the, uh, con the next amp, in this case, which allows them a stable set of information with which to apply for fun uh, financing. Mm -hmm. And it also gives the town a carefully predicted line of income, revenue, and revenue to the town. Um, it's taxes in everything but name. 
is what it is. And so Roy had looked at all of the current programs going around, um, pilots that have been signed in communities all over Western Mass, I believe, and sent them the proposal several months ago of a pilot on behalf of the town of Conway, which would be involve an annual payment in lieu of taxes, um, $13,500 per megawatt of rated capacity. Now this is a six megawatt facility. The pilot processing fee of $10,000, 5,000 payable within five days of the party's agreement, and 5,000 payable on execution of the pilot. That would be what would pay for his consulting fee, among other things. The pilot would escalate at 1% per year for the 20-year life of the agreement, and the, <coughs> it would be billed as part of our regular semi-annual billing. It says quarterly here, but we're semi-annual town. So, in this way, we exempt the solar energy development from property taxation on their equipment. Mm -hmm. The property owner still pays taxes on the land under the equipment, mm -hmm. and those taxes will probably go up because that land is now producing a great deal more. That's where we would get into the income approach to value that several acres. Not their entire parcel, but the several acres directly under the um, solar array and its access at probably a significantly higher rate per acre than any place else in town. Mm -hmm. We don't have those figures yet, but next hand came back. They were a good discussion, or you know, good, a thorough discussion about why they feel that the proposal was a bit too sunny for Conway. <laughs> Some of the aspects of it are that there are many, many more arrays coming online. It's an industry that has grown significantly in, in five years, let alone the last 10 years. Many towns are, are having the large arrays, therefore it's changing things within the electrical industry. The state programs that help to support these um, constructions have changed also. They used to have the SREC program in which the uh, solar uh, renewable energy credits, SREC, could be obtained by the company because of what they've, they've built. That has no longer happened and they've come up with what's called the SMART program. The residential part of the SMART program filled up very quickly as did as did actually the industrial. And it says here, uh, they said something about, they've applied for incentive eligibility under the SMART program, but it was oversubscribed since it opened in early 2019. It, the so Conway Solar, which is the name of their name for this project, has been placed on the wait list. Um, they understand that based on the rapid filling of the program, they're working for, a, the state is working on a SMART program expansion for which they hope to be eligible. And they go into the different rates for these, which are decreasing, uh, declining slightly with each uh, iteration. What they've come back with is a counter proposal of an annual rate of $13,300 per megawatt capacity. Uh, can, they, they do say 13. I mean, that, no, that's, that's, what, that's the, the towns, I'm yeah. sorry. Oh, yeah, yeah. Is, yeah. Yeah. Can I ask yeah. you a question about yeah. that? So there, your, your, the, the town's proposal yeah. uses the term megawatt of rated capacity. Yes. The counter proposal in Nexant language uses the term. No, no, ours, ours was installed capacity. Well, we, we, said, we said rated. In this in this letter, uh, they they quoted as installed. That was my question. But our ah. letter said rated. Yes. Yes, it does. See, that's why you have me because I do proofread. Good, good. That's true. So, what is the difference? Is there a significant the difference, difference? Well, it, when it's actually when mm -hmm. it's actually built, it may be have a capacity of five point nine. It may mm -hmm. have a capacity of five point eight five. So rated for six, as opposed to actually installed at 
is a difference. How significant one, I don't know. So um, they, they, they may run into issues during construction, which lead them to... Right, where they absolutely... But this is a payment bills. per megawatt, so if they, have, if they have issues that lower it, it, it wouldn't affect... If, if is, it's they're paying us per megawatt, so if they end up, but it depends on whether it's the rated capacity or the actual installed capacity. Now they've already been through all the concom and everything else hearings and define the wetlands and all that. I suppose there might be an area where they simply couldn't install it on ledge or something. But they would have identified that if if topography was a problem already. That's been done. Mm. They will install a certain number of panels. Yes. And each of those panels is rated at a certain power yes. output. I, it I, also I, I don't think these two words in affect anything. Or it, it's it, it's it would also be interesting. this would be a good thing to get from Roy, but yeah, it's also a matter of what they actually install when the time comes because panels are all the time being increased in their capacity. See, the other thing that makes me curious about that is their, the, the, the reason you think that the town used that word as well is because their recap yes, their of recap the town proposal yes. changed the terms of the town proposal. They did. And, and that should be a red flag to everybody. So, and I don't, that's just, ge just general contract drafting kind of rules of the road, that should be the type of thing that should be a red flag. Well, there's certainly a red circle around that. Yes. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, I believe they stuck very clearly to exactly the terms that the town had proposed in their reiteration of it. Their counterproposal, as I say, dropped the annual payment per megawatt from thirteen five to 10000 the escalation clause, on the other hand, they increase from the requested 1% per year to 1.5% per year for the life of the agreement. They reduced the processing fee from $10,000 to $3,000, half payable within 10 days of agreement, half payable upon execution of the final agreement. And all other general terms they would accept from the town. The biggest one here, the, well, the biggest three are the annual rate, the escalation, which is to our benefit to accept theirs, and the processing fee. That's a significant reduction. One of the things that they did was provide a run out of how the funding, the, the tax revenue to the town would work over the course of the 20 years and they're estimating on a six megawatt array that in the first year at ten thousand dollars per megawatt we would receive sixty thousand dollars in revenue from the equipment alone <coughs> increasing to seventy nine thousand six hundred seventeen dollars at the per year at the end of the 20 years but we know it won't be a six megawatt array. So, yeah. but, but, but these are just to give you a flavor. Yeah, well, they're, they're, right. Isn't that they're, only they're only going to give you a payment on installed capacity. Installed capacity, yes. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, they also offered um, a list of agreements that have been made with other communities, the rate per megawatt. And it ranges from 7000 to 12.5. And what is, what is Roy Bishop? Our consultant, think he's, about. He's our consultant. Yeah, what does he think about this? Well, that was, what was one of the things I was waiting to hear tonight. Okay, so we don't we don't totally know what he thinks no. about this at this time. No. Okay. Well, all of the all of the smart programs were a lot less than ten thousand, mm -hmm. so they're also probably quite a bit smaller. Um, yeah, we don't the, know the size. Right. I, I think Nexamp is expecting that the subtractors that will be paid out that have to do with the, the, the state sets an amount of money that they will uh, provide as an incentive payment mm -hmm. and then if you can you qual you apply to qualify under certain things that cause that rate to go up or to go down yes. and uh, because they're installing it in a field where they have to cut down trees they're subject to certain subtractors because they're installing it as a community 
uh, solar mm -hmm. program, they hope to get certain adders to that incentive mm -hmm. payment. Yep. Um, tomorrow, and I hope everyone in Conway will <laughs> show up, tomorrow there is a hearing, uh, there is a review. The, 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 so like you said, that the, in about a year ago, the, the uh, solar allocation got oversold mm -hmm. and all of the projects have been stopped for a year and with and the DOER committed to have a review of the smart program mm -hmm. after after that occurred yeah. and here we are a year later they're having they've been reviewing it and they're announcing to the public the result of that review tomorrow oh. at UMass yeah. at three o'clock all right tomorrow afternoon. They're actually announcing it in Lenox, if anyone wants to go to Lenox and hear it slightly earlier. And then the second meeting is tomorrow at three o'clock at UMass. Mm. And no one knows what it's going to be. Uh, Nexamp, I'm sure, has some ideas of what they think it's going to be. And I think that they believe that there is going to be uh, a, a larger subtractor for building solar in places that would require cutting down trees. Mm -hmm. uh, so th that's what they expect. And so that may be why they're going for one and a half percent instead of the two yep. percent that we're seeing in the mm -hmm. other programs under the SMART program. Yes. And they, they actually raised that from the town's one percent. They so, did. Yes. So I think that's sort of a a way that, that they can sort of push some of those costs off to the future and lower their upfront costs mm -hmm. by cutting down the processing fee especially, which is a one-time fee. Yeah. So so Roy Bishop is basically an expert in these. Yes. Okay, but we don't have his opinion on no, the counter for pros. Okay. Um, or the chance to ask questions of him. So we don't we don't need to do anything on this tonight, correct? So it, I guess what, what yeah, I, I want I want to hear from, from Roy yeah, on this. Yeah. Yeah. So what I was sort of looking at is just a just a um, what what the difference is between our proposal the, the bottom line difference between our proposal and their proposal because mm -hmm. kind of, um, it was that, was that that was like a I started to do that in like a the napkin or the paper towel the kitchen <laughs> table and I ran out of paper towel. Well, we, do, do we can certainly provide that. Do, do we and also any? come up with how many. Um, Megawatts are on each of these towns. Yeah, we, we need more information on, on mm -hmm. these, these comparable projects. Yep. We need to know then, when, we need to know how big. Um, and, and I don't know why we should take an escalator that's below the annual rate of inflation. Which yeah. right that's now what, is That's two, why all of them are 2.5. Two two and two and two and well, because yeah, the electricity probably will not be going up by the rate of inflation. Uh, that would be yeah, yeah but, but it just just the time value of money, okay. Um, ah, yeah. welcome. Hey. Hi. Hi. Six is right, wasn't it? No. That's, That's all right. right. Sorry. <laughs> I'm just sitting up in the other you know, tell office. Oh, no. Nobody oh. here yet. We look for you over this there. This is perfect timing. No. Oh, perfect. John, our work. John, John, our audition. I'm Bob. Our friend. Um, Phil. 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 Glad yeah, you're here. Tom. Yeah. Okay, we, we, we were just off. saying we're not going anywhere until we hear from you. <laughs> Sorry, we were, we were going to be stuck here all night. No, no, no. I'm sitting over there. Actually, I was at the ball diamond looking at the. Oh heck. The field. So. Oh. Okay. All right. Well, we. So, yeah, a couple oh, of the yeah. questions that just we came reviewed. up were. Uh, mm -hmm. Well, what's the bottom line difference between their proposal and our? They're just making it up. Uh, well, They're just making it up. But, 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 but what, what does it mean in terms of cost for us? And then um, it looks like all the SMART programs are paying out a lot less um, in megawatts. Um, no, that's a, that's a fallacy. That's what they're going to have you believe. So you want the long, long and the short of it. Well, the short of it is um, there's been three different iterations of uh, solar subsidies. The first one, which was the most advantageous, only because you earned an SREC certificate that you could sell in the open market, mm -hmm. and you could sell that for whatever spot market price was. Mm -hmm. Very few companies did. The only company that did that was Sun Edison, and they went back. Almost every uh, company that came forward looking for a pilot in their revenue stream told us that we were going, they were going to um, pre-sell strip sell their SRECs for anywhere from $75 to say $125 per 
per meg water, seven and a half cents with 12 and a half cents. So when you look at their revenue stream based on what they were actually going to earn, it's very comparable to the revenue stream that comes out of the SMART program. SREC 2, um, what they did with SREC 2 is they limited um, the SREC certificate sale to about what the, um, the, the strip market was, was getting at the time. Mm -hmm. um, but again, they extended it from 10 years to 15 years, so you earn a subsidy for five more years. The SMART program extends the subsidy at approximately the same rate, depending mm -hmm. on what tranche you get into, for 20 years. So your income stream has now gone out from 10 to 15 to 20, and where SREC 1 and SREC 2 were volatile in terms of what you could sell your mm -hmm. SRECs for, yeah. this is guaranteed money. There, there is no ifs, ands, or buts about it. Problem with, um, with, with this particular uh, project is they get in on tranche 10. So basically what they did, yeah, sorry, it's very warm in here. Um, what they did is they had, um, Tranche one was, say, 15 cents a kilowatt. Tranche 10 is 10 cents a kilowatt. So on surface, it's 15 cents or 5 cents per kilowatt cheaper. Mm -hmm. But they have all these adders, okay? So if you do community solar, it's 2.9 cents. Mm -hmm. Anywhere it was 2.9, 5, 5 cents, et cetera, et cetera. So when you actually look at their revenue stream, I gave you a forecast, as we're required to do by the Department of Revenue, at 13.1 cent. Uh, per kilowatt. My last conversation, and that was total for everything. My last conversation with Ethan was, yes, they're going to get 13.1 cents. So I'm going to tell you that the 13.5 is a nice middle of the road, not overstated, not understated uh, level where your pilot agreement should be. It's also consistent with the last four pilots that I've done, which were also smart projects, again, with different tranches. So they're not the, these that are lower? No. That's, I mean, are are they wrong, or are they just showing no, us it's lower? Interesting. It's interesting that they don't list any of the ones that I've worked on. Uh -huh. Okay? Uh -huh. This is typical of every solar company. They're going to give you... Uh, it's just like if the assessors came to you and said, how much do you want to pay in taxes this year? Well, you're going to give them your best offer. Not, not necessarily the fairest one. So this is what the NextAmp has done. Um, conveniently, they've left out a couple of NextAmp agreements um, that they have signed, like um, uh, bu, 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 they just signed one for um, Wales for almost $19,000 a megawatt. Hmm. However, not only is that community solar, their, their adders worked out to be about 19 cents. So it was definitely a much more worthwhile project. So there, there are other adders, adders like putting on a rooftop and oh yes, yes. Know, there are all kinds of good adders. If you put it on brownfields and yeah. all that yeah. other good stuff. Yeah. So basically, what I've done here is I put together a little. You have this is the the terms I, I didn't. Yes, we. we yeah, have, we have that. We I have your counter. That. So what oh. I did is I put together. Yes, I mean, is that the original? Proposal? No, we didn't have the counter proposal. Well, no, this is that was the one that we sent them. Yeah, May, so, May 6th, 2019. Yes, that was mm -hmm. So this is what I have done. Let me get this organized. Yeah, I have five. Okay. You have one of those? Thank you. And here we go. So basically what I have done is I have reiterated the fact that uh, I, I'm not going to go through the, the appraisal technique unless you, you wish me to. Uh, what I have done is reiterated the income approach um, that um, they've given us. Basically, I'm using their numbers. You know, without qualification, I'm just going to accept it. They're in the business. And in the yeah. past, next example has been pretty straightforward about this. So they're tranche 10, which is um, 9.8 cents per kilowatt. So is this a comma mm -hmm. before the 800 down here? Not a period, just somewhere, well, uh, somewhere right, right there. Yeah. Is it 19 million? Yeah, 19 million, 623, 800. Yeah. yeah, 19 yeah, million dollars, sorry. Yeah. Um, so 9.8 cents, the community solar adder is 2.9 cents. And the battery star adder, which I'll get back to, is 13, 1.3 cents. They do have a land use deduction because it's not on the brown fields, et cetera. So their total revenue is 13.1 cents. Let's keep this in perspective. Over 20 years, they're going, their gross is going to be almost $20 million. 
So they're, they're not poor. This is a for-profit entity. They're going to make money. They have 20 or 30 of these. That's amazing. Uh, it is. It's I perfect. know that property. I've been there a lot. There's $20 million out of that property. <laughs> so Miracles. Me still so this is crazy. What, what, I, what I then listed is the total of the 13.5 with the 1% increase that you know we have offered to them. And that comes out to be 1.7 million, say 1.8 million in round numbers. That's 9% of the total revenue. If you do a capitalized income approach to a commercial property, not that you have this here in Conway, but if I'm in West Springfield or Chickabee or Holyoke sure. like that, yeah. traditionally the tax load is about 10%. And again, that will fluctuate depending upon the tax rate. So in Chickabee, mm -hmm. where the tax, the, the uh, commercial rate's 30 bucks, in West Springfield where it's 35 bucks, that's going to grow to 12 or 15 percent mm -hmm. of, of the, the gross bottom line when you do a capitalized income approach. So mm -hmm. my approach is right in the ballpark of how an assessment would be done at any other you know, for-profit um, entity. So in comparison, if you went a full and fair cash value route, they're saying that their solar array, just the equipment cost itself, which I showed in my spreadsheet, is about $5.8 million, but their actual out-of-pocket cost Mm -hmm. It's closer to $1.8 million per megawatt. They're not giving you labor, site prep, uh, and all that other stuff, inter interconnect mm -hmm. fees, et cetera. If you were to go full and fair cash value, let's say 1.8 per, per megawatt, it'd be about $10 million, about $200,000 a year in taxes at mm -hmm. your roughly $19 tax rate. So when you look at that first year payment of $81,000, compared to what it would be if it was a normal entity that didn't have the benefit of this, mm -hmm. um, this legislation, they're getting a substantial tax break. Is it substantial enough for them? No, they're going to come in and say, geez, you know, we can't make the project work at these numbers, et cetera, et cetera. Mm -hmm. And quite honestly, I go BS. You have a $10 million bill for construction. If you cut that down by 10%, we wouldn't be having a discussion about whether $81,000 per year was, was uh, inappropriate. You have a land lease. That land lease is more than the $81,000 a year that you're going to pay the community mm -hmm. for the pilot. So we're the low man in the totem pole. Okay, but yet we're the ones that have the most flexibility in terms of saying, well, you know, it's good for the economy, it's good for you know, all the, the arguments that you can come up with for mm -hmm. this. You know, Amherst did one for $6,000 a megawatt, and I was just with Dave Burgess today, and they go, what, are you people nuts? You know, this is a for-profit entity. They're not, you know, not profit, they're not giving this away. Why are you giving away the store? Well, in the Amherst, they want to support green economics. Okay, fine. If that's the way you feel, terrific. But you left all this money on the table, and I make a distinction, especially with community solar, between ratepayers and taxpayers. Mm -hmm. if they have to sell the electricity to somebody. So they have to come in and say, well, you know, this is good for, for your community. It's good for the 200 rate ratepayers that are going to get a discount on the electric bill, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm going, great, what about the other people in town who aren't getting it, number one? And number two, we serve taxpayers. The tax, taxpayer, all taxpayers deserve to get what is a fair value for this, for this, uh, for this property. And if you turn to the last page, uh, Williamsburg has just done two at 14. Um, both were smart. Uh, Williamsburg did one, and these are all communities that I've aided. Uh, Williamsburg, um, being a small community, had a very contentious um, negotiating with a, 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 an ESREC uh, facility. They didn't want to go through that again, and I told them, look, just tell them it's $14,000 to go away. They took the $14,000, no one hit butts. West Hampton is with um, a smart community solar project. Um, their tax rate is a little bit less than yours, ergo only $13,000 a megawatt but they're paying 2% of the year. Certainly in the long run, it's a little more beneficial than 13.5 at one. Um, Royalston is doing $14,000, and they are also the beneficiary of a very nice land lease for, the, for that solar site, which is going on the um, uh, uh, Cap Landfill. And Blanford is the most recent one just within two weeks, and that is also a smart uh, at 12.5, and again, their tax rate is only about 12,000, 12,000 So mm -hmm. when you do your exercise and trying to figure it out, obviously a higher tax rate equals higher taxes, um, mm -hmm. greater uh, uh, payments. So in retrospect, the 
is exactly where you should be. Um, and very few communities that have stood their ground have not gotten, gotten very close to that number. Well, it works out to be 13 and 13 to 50. You know, I'm not going to split hairs or something like that. Yeah. Um, that's exactly where you should be for community what, solar. What cap rate are you using these days? I use almost 16. 16? Yeah, which, I, again, I think is extraordinarily generous to mm -hmm. the, um, okay. the solar company. The first well, what's one. What's the cap rate? Yeah. It's, it's the ultimate budget factor. <laughs> it's a discount. It, what you're doing is, is you're measuring yeah, the future value. Discounting future, future, uh -huh. future value. Yeah. 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 And, and, it, and again, in dealing with solar, now I've also worked for half a dozen solar companies um, trying to work that through my business. Most of those guys use a discounted cash flow methodology. Basically, what you have is a declining income stream here. Uh, unlike a uh, well, mall is a bad example in this day and age, mm -hmm. but a commercial entity, a gas station, where you can expect you know, level or rising income over a period of years, this income will go down. It will go down for two reasons. One, um, the, the uh, age of the, the, uh, the panels, mm -hmm. and, of course, the degradation of about 5% a year, give or take. Um, and then after 20 years, of course, the revenue stream. So what they'll argue is they want an 8% return um, because they're, what would you pay today for the benefit of, of a dollar for dollar year one, but what would you pay for the future benefit of that dollar? You wouldn't pay a dollar for dollar, you'd pay 80 cents on the dollar for year two, 70 cents for year three, and what, a nickel or a penny in year 20 because it's gonna take you that long to realize the money. As I've explained to these, these um, companies ad infinitum, by the rules of the Department of Revenue, with which the assessors have to answer and, and you in terms of putting these together, we have to estimate what would be a fair assessment. And we don't recognize discounted cash flow as an assessment practice in Massachusetts by law. Mm -hmm. So yes, you're getting a little bit of that because if you looked in my spreadsheet by year 20, we have a significantly decreased revenue stream. Obviously, then you have a significantly de decreased value. Um, how, how, how fast can they depreciate these panels? Well, they're going to degrade at about anywhere from 3 to 5% a year. That's all? That's all. How they don't get more up front. Is, is that different? Than, you mean that's what they expect? The, it'll make 5% less electricity? Yes, because the panels yeah. actually degrade. But how fast are they going to write them off? No, no. Oh, no, no, no. Oh, yeah, that's IRS rules. They're going to write them off five in years. 70, five years, seven years, depending on whatever they're going to do. Mm -hmm. so. But the actual panels themselves degrade. Yeah, they degrade about 5% a year. Yeah, give or take. I've seen different yeah. numbers, and nobody knows because the oldest panels are three years old. So, of course, the fine the argument here is if you have, um, you know, terrific generation days, then they could exceed that revenue yeah. expectation. Or the opposite is. Now, the interesting thing about this is in California, there are times when the, the electric generation from solar is at a zero worth because they generate electricity on a sunny day mm -hmm. um, yeah. when there's ample electricity to the, to the grid, so it has a zero value. And that's why the battery storage system is a important to these com companies. Even though their their price is pegged, mm. it's to their benefit to get it out there in the marketplace mm -hmm. at, at peak times for, for solar, which may or may not be in a sunny day. So let's talk for a minute about the battery storage adder. It's adding about 20% to the value of the 13.5 that I've computed. They're not sure, in my last conversation, that they're actually going to go with that because it's an expensive option even though it pays and it has a very limited lifespan with the batteries as they currently exist in maybe eight years, ten years at the tops. So now you're looking at another multi-million dollar additional uh, expenditure to continue with the battery storage system mm -hmm. in years 12 through through 20. But isn't technology improving so much that it could just be waiting for a couple years? And no, it's not. Mm -hmm. uh, from what I've read, and again, mm -hmm. I, I'm picking up all this information just because I'm involved in this. Um, battery storage is decades away. It's just not, they haven't figured it out yet. Um, and the problem with, with battery storage is, you know, we're talking about green energy. Um, the panels are extraordinarily toxic. In 25 years or 30 years, when we all of these come offline, 
I don't know what they're going to do with that. It is, you can't break them up. You can't do anything. You can't melt them down. The galvanized piping that is traditionally used for the racking has no recyclable value. And now if you add a giant semi-truck size battery that only has an eight year life or 10 year life, where's that all gonna go? Mm -hmm. I mean, the battery is the worst of the bunch. So anyway, here I do have a suggestion. Since that is an iffy thing, um, we can reduce the 13.5 to say $11,000. Say, okay, we'll give you $11,000 at 1%. However, if you do go ahead with the battery storage, then we're not going to include that as part of the pilot. We're going to tax that just as anybody else bought personal property into this community that's eligible to be taxed. And I would write that right into the pilot. So if the battery in year one or year two costs, say, $2 million, then you're going to pick up $40,000 approximately in, in revenue. And of course, that will depreciate. Mm -hmm. Just like regular personal property, when we value this table, say new is $1,000, year one is depreciated to 900, year two and down to a minimum number of, say, $300 of carried on the books for use purposes until you get rid of the table. Battery storage can do essentially the same thing. The benefit to you is, A, it's more money than you're going to get under the 13.5. And two, it adds significantly to your your levy increase in that first year. So under under that plan, you'd be talking about fourteen about fourteen three. Mm -hmm. Okay, with that with taxing that battery. Right. Okay. Rather yeah. than thirteen five and fourteen three. And how about that one percent a year? Why yeah, you just we, said one percent instead of yeah. Why are we percent? Why yeah. are we getting one percent rather than than two? The theory is, and I do not subscribe to this, but it's been proffered actually not by me, so I've just kind of gone down to it, is in theory, your taxes go up to a half percent each and every year with your levy increase. Well, the problem with that theory is your max at 25. So even if you use that at two and a half percent under the theory that taxes are going to go up to a half percent or the rate's going to go up to a half percent, um, you're only going to get five years at 18 or $19 a thousand before mm -hmm. your cap community. So that's problem number one. Problem number two is your tax rate actually doesn't increase by 2.5% annually because if your values go up, even though you are adding dollars to your levy, that might equal 2.5% of the levy increase. If, you're, if your values go up 10%, your base tax rate would drop down 10% to what you'd add two and a half. So over the course of 20 years, you are not going to get that consistent two and a half percent increase. So that's why I've modified it. It's not a zero sum game though, because when your values go up, other things go up as well, such as your school assessment and your percentage. Oh right, but you're capped at that 25. So yes, so at $20 a thousand, which is what you're close to, if values go up 10%, uh, you would drop $2 to 18 to which then you'd add your normal levy increase, whatever, it might end up at 1850, 1875, you run in place. And the other reason we started this is I did a study for a company that was buying a number of, of solar facilities and they were quite contentious amongst the, the two parties. And one of the issues was an estimation of what taxes should be because they're looking to buy, obviously, the income stream over 20 years. Mm -hmm. And um, in the community that we did, we actually went back 20 years and I went forward five years and determined that the tax rate yo-yoed so much that it pretty much remained constant. Now, tax dollars increased the individual property owners because the assessments have gone up mm -hmm. significantly over 25 years, but that tax rate remained fairly constant with all the pluses and minuses of you know, they had an override and the override went away and then values went up, et cetera. So that's my only 1%. So here in Conway, our growth is very low. Right. We're not, you know, you mentioned, it, you know, growth. And uh, and many of our communities like Conway are looking at facing the gap. Oh, yeah. Right. Hitting the gap. What, what, what were the escalators on these four pro programs? Uh, most were one, let's see, one was only half a percent. Uh, two were one percent, one was two percent. The low one at twelve and a half was two percent. I couldn't believe they bought the two and a half percent. I threw that out there, figuring, all right, I got to give something in negotiations. So they didn't focus on the two percent at all. So we got away with it. Every other company would not have gone for that. And coincidentally, in that particular community in Blandford, 
the people negotiating the pilot were not going to be the final operators. So they were looking to establish a, a bottom line, obviously as much to their favor as possible, because that was going to be the basis of the selling, which they, they sell. ended up doing. So I think they just missed the two and a half percent completely because they were focused so, on year one, it was going to be X, and that was coming out of their pocket. Year two through 20 was going to be out of the other, the buyer's pocket. So I'm, did these other projects have batteries? No. No, okay. They're all in discussion. So now, incidentally, my idea about the battery storage came to me from the town of Methuen, which has negotiated a smart pilot for a lot of money because they have a $35 tax rate. It's well over $18 a thousand per megawatt. But because of the battery storage, they said, no, we're not going to include that. Even though you get the adder, we're going to separate that and tax it at full and fair cash value because it was to their benefit. Mm -hmm. And um, my issue with that is, um, and again, if you write it into the pilot, if they buy it, there is no issue. But if that became an issue of contention, so okay, we're going to sign the pilot and we're going to deal with this later, um, the current ATB decision, which established a general exemption for commercial solar, would that battery storage be considered part of the solar array, or would the exemption apply only to the solar array? That was never litigated. I'd be curious to see how that works out. Yeah. I see both sides of that. I think you could make a cogent argument that, yeah, it's not part of the solar array, it shouldn't be part well, of the You could exemption. put the answer in the pilot agreement as well. Well, that would be the case. So if they wanted the cheaper upfront money, um, you obviously are giving away some of that money. But don't forget, my approach includes the battery storage adder of, you know, 10%. So, so I mean, I, I, the, the, the initial, you, your proposal of 13.5 was exactly where we should be. It was fair. Yeah. And, uh, and towns that have stuck their heels in almost always get close to what they're asking for. Yeah. But, so how do we skip down to 11 from that? Well, from, 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 from I, those exalted principles. I mean, yeah, if, I, if we tax the batter. Right. I'm giving you an option. So an it's going to be 13.5 with the battery. Or 11 without plus the battery as a full and fair cash value, which actually works out in dollars more favorable. Yeah, to be about 14.3, taxing the battery. I got. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Okay. So, so, and my other thing is, um, I, I, I had wondered from the very beginning when this first was proposed whether taxing it in its full and fair regular value would bring in more revenue than, than, than. A pilot agreement and taxing it at its full and fair value is two hundred thousand dollars for the first year. If so, we'll if if they don't file for their exemption and the current legislation that's pending in the municipal finance uh, bill doesn't uh, codify the exemption to eliminate commercial solar, so you have a risk there. Right now, the the appellate tax board has decided in the town of Swansea case that all solar, literal interpretation of the legislation, is exempt from taxation. That was never appealed. Okay? And as a side, and interestingly enough, um, they left open the, 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 their, their the promulgation of, of the decision said because it's a sale of electricity to a taxable Massachusetts, uh, taxable Massachusetts entity that the exemption applies. So it left open the question of, well, what if you're selling to a tax exempt? Does that mean it's taxable? And that is currently begin being litigated versus the town of Freetown versus Borrego Solar. Hmm. So there's all kinds of interesting issues there. The third step in that process for getting the Westboro decision, which really isn't applicable to commercial solar, is NSTAR uh, appealed their full and fair cash value to the city of Boston. I approached the city of Boston on behalf of NSTAR, the pilot, and the assessing office said, we're not interested. We're going to tax you with full and fair cash value. They appealed. Um, they appealed on the exemption and lost because they're a grid company. They're not a private entity. Mm -hmm. And they appealed the valuation on the cost basis, which is what I have here for ten dollars and lost on that. But that decision was faulty because neither side presented a very good case for the valuation part. And so I just figured they were going to win on the exemption part. And that was like a side 
part of, of the, yeah, you know, if we lose this, maybe we'll try this type of thing. So the water is muddy about what is or what isn't taxable. So the legislature through the MAO is attempting to step in. They did have legislation which was proposed last year which didn't get out of committee. It was referred back to the House and the general terms of that legislation were any solar entity that uses 125% of the total output for their own personal benefit would be exempt. Well, these people are using none of their for personal use, so that would make them taxable. So that has been reintroduced. There were a few issues that needed to be settled between the House and Senate in the, the now pending municipal modernization bill. Mm -hmm. So if that passes as of January 1, assuming it passes before January 1, then this would become fully taxable. If it doesn't pass and it lingers on for another year, then if you assess them at full and fair cash value, you run the risk of going to the appellate tax board, losing based on their further prior decision, and now having to make a decision whether you're going to take that appeal to the SJC. That's a lot of money. So you're going to eat up but, that $200,000 in no time. Right, but mm -hmm. if it's going to be decided within the next three months, and the difference is 60000 a year versus 200000 a year for 20 years, well, you wouldn't have two thousand, two hundred thousand so a year. what's going to happen is have to year one with the equipment. Right. Yeah. Year one, we're going to run with cost, just as if I would run with cost on your house or any commercial building. Yeah. Um, you know, there's three tenets to market value: you know, cost, income, and, and market. So, in a year or two from now, you're going to have market value because you're going to have uh, completed entities out there with pilots, probably, that are going to sell, which you can now draw a direct correlation to on a price per megawatt. And that's going to become the market value. But once you move away from that cost, because as a buyer, you're buying a limited income stream. You're not buying an infinite income stream. You're going to pay less than, than that, that cost. So what you're going to see, in my guess, over 20 years, is a rapidly declining price. And by year 20, you're going to get zero value. You're going to get zero tax dollars. So yes, full and fair cash value benefits you in year one. But it won't benefit you probably past your test. Right? And two, now you're going to bring into play what should proper valuation be. Well, you're going to pay somebody every year ten or fifteen thousand mm -hmm. dollars to do that, just like you pay, well, pay me mm -hmm. for, to do the hydros. Mm -hmm. They're a special use property. It's not something you can you can glean mm -hmm. just because you know we have ranches that sold and colonials <laughs> that sold. So you have to factor that in. Plus, if they don't like the value you're at risk of litigation for what that value is. So you're going to have to take and put some of that money aside and overlay. Legal, legal costs. Right. Mm -hmm. So, you know, all in all, the pilot is yeah, probably I, a better deal. I understand exactly what you're saying. I was uh, an MAI for 20 years. Yeah, so, so. yeah you got it. So. so tomorrow the DOER is having a review of the SMART program. Mm -hmm. Do you know what they're going to come out with? No, Do you I have, have no any idea. insight? I uh, suspect that it's been extraordinarily successful in terms of... Uh, I, Talking to uh, Jake Carney from 38 Degrees, uh, nice guy, California company, has purchased 10 or 15 uh, shovel-ready or completed projects here. And I asked him, you know, what he sees, and he says, we bought in at a, at a you know, a tranche two, three, four level, which mm -hmm. is significantly better. He expected that the market would drop off because did you want to be at 15 cents or 10 cents? Economically, it's it's a third of your revenue. That drop off has not happened. We have as many companies today coming in, looking for solar opportunities at Tranche Ten. So my expectation is that they're going to extend the program. Okay. Oh sure. Yeah. And the reason they went to the so the the SREC One program that everybody in the door prior to Massachusetts SREC, there were nine other states that tried some kind of solar. Uh, subsidy program, nine of them failed. Okay, Massachusetts was the first one was successful because they threw potentially 30 cents, 35 cents, 36 cents a kilowatt um, at these companies in terms of being able to sell on a spot market or um, contractual basis, very lucrative. Um, that came out of our pockets. I mean, rate payers paid for that. So where, where wholesale cost of natural gas was maybe three cents, Wholesale cost of, of uh, solar was 30 cents. Well, you do the math, somebody's paying for that. It ain't, it ain't a good so, SREC 1 got everybody in the door. 
SREP 2 was an attempt to rein in some of those costs. Uh, and it was about 15% less valuable for revenue stream on an annual basis, but extended it out five more years. Okay, so, you know, it was a wash for the companies, but it was a little easier in a ratepayer's pocket. Now, at anywhere between 10 and 15 cents plus the adders, you're now at, say, half of what the SREP 1 cost for, which means you as the, the end of product consumer are paying less for, for that solar energy. How do we know what the battery's going to cost? I've seen estimates all over the place. I'm going to guess it's going to be about $2 million. Okay. Okay. But again, that technology may be moving forward. It may be cheaper. But if they are going with a battery option, they're going to do it within the next year. So by January 1. What do we tax the battery at? It'll be worth about $40,000 a year to me. Yeah. But our standard tax rate. Well, yeah. Right? It, the standard tax rate, yes, yeah. but as, as it's uh, it costs. I mean, uh, at cost. Yeah, at cost. Yeah. At cost. At cost. Well, the, the income. So the income at 2.9 cents, I'm sorry, 1.3 cents would be mm -hmm. 10, would be roughly, I did the math backwards here, 1.3, something like that. Um, but the actual cost is going to be a little bit more. Because don't forget, they're collecting that 1.3 mm -hmm. over 20 years, where that first year cost is all contained in, in their capital improvement. So all of which is money they're borrowing. So in the first year, we're making forty thousand on that battery, but that battery is going to depreciate over ten years uh, to zero. To zero. They'll tell us it depreciates sooner than that. Sure. Mm -hmm. I would suggest that we would establish a minimum percentage, say twenty mm -hmm. percent, ten percent at the, the worst we're case. Consulting him for this again. And, and carry that forward until the battery is physically removed yeah. or replaced. Can the pilot agreement say all that? Spell yeah. that out? Oh, absolutely. Sure. Uh, I wouldn't leave that out there without. It would, so, yeah. Because that would, by putting it in a pilot agreement, you would avoid the, the question of whether or not it's part of a solar array and would be part of the exemption. Yeah. So you would leave yourself open yeah. to that yeah. litigation. Has this happened with any other towns? Methuen is the only one. Methuen. Batteries. And, and, and they got their pilot with the battery with separated With the battery out? written in. With mm -hmm. Nexamp? No. No. Okay. No, again, so. it, you also have to keep in mind that the technology may be changing. Yeah. So the value of this battery, purchase yeah. fixed year say, most could be overridden five or six or ten years. Most out. companies really are interested in the battery storage adder option. Okay. These are because they're at such a low price per kilowatt because they're tranche ten. Anything they can do to, to move that up. Yeah. But anybody who's tranche six, seven, six, um, one through six is not interested because there's no benefit to, to this company to doing that, for adding that cost, other than that 1.3 cents. Because unlike, um, you know, a, a turnkey power plant, so the one that comes to mind is the big arc that's on the side of the river in West Springfield. You've seen it as mm -hmm. you drive down 91. Mm -hmm. That is a peaker. That operates at 8% capacity. They only turn it on. It's a gas cogeneration plant. When uh, the... the um, Spot market price per kilowatt from ISO uh, exceeds a certain amount. I think mm. it was like forty dollars a megawatt. That's the only time it's it's profitable for them to do that. Mm. They sit there, they turn a key, they fire it up, they sell as much electricity mm. at whatever the July rate when the air conditioning is on, and then mm. they, they turn it off. So they are using that as it's most profitable because they can turn it on and off. And peaker plants are converting the batteries too. Well, yes, because now they can, but here, they're getting the same number regardless. So if they generate in noon, and they put it in battery storage, and they release it out to the grid at midnight, right. they're still getting 13.1 cents. That's yeah. yeah. they're, they're not getting any more money. When electricity is too Or less. less. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, so I, most companies that really are not interested in doing that, except now the last one's in, they, they'll take the one point. They'll take the cost and then add the one point three cents to the bottom line. Could could a proposal like that uh, discourage them from doing the battery adder or or not doing as much of it? It's up to them. I, I would propose an either or. Say, look, the the, the issue here. Okay, I, I got you. The the issue here is they have included the battery adder as a planning item. They haven't actually done it. 
have mm -hmm. come forward to you and said this is what we're going to do it. So the the and again, I don't see a real risk here, but they could come back and say, well, if we don't add the battery storage adder, you take out the 1.3 cents, we'll run with your income approach, and guess what? We come up with, you know, 10.5 something. Okay. Well, this way, you're protecting yourself against that going away. If they come back and say, well, look. We like all of this. The reason we're offering 10, so obviously it's more money in their pocket, is we're not sure about the, the battery storage adder. Mm -hmm. So right now we're, we're using it as part of the formula, but if it goes away, so this way you protect it. All right? So you're getting still the fair number based on their actual income stream without the battery adder, and now you, you hit them for the you know, the full and fair cash value of the battery, and it works out to your benefit. If tomorrow the solar review announces a, a big increase in the subtractor they have for building on on undisturbed land. Yeah, well, it's only about the percent uh, and, and that could go up. Right, but their, my understanding is they have applied for tranche 10. So I doubt they're going to I don't know if they can, it's a legitimate question, whether they can pull it out and say, okay, we're, we're not going to go in tranche 10, we're going to go tranche 11, which now adds money, um, because this has been such a successful program. I don't know if the DLE would, would allow them to do that. I think they're locked into tranche 10, so. Uh, so you think because they applied and this was the, the subtractor at that time, yep. that's what they're going to get? Yep. I, oh, I, I oh, totally believe that, so. But again, who knows? So, um, but that'd be interesting to see. I, my, again, I've collected. Oh God, I think I'm up to 85 or 90 of these now. I've collected so much information. My I head is going sideways. Mm. Um, obviously, in in this type of enterprise, uh, different people have different expectations. Um, I've only had one company that said, "No, nope, we're not going to build because of that price." Okay. And I found out they had all kinds of financial difficulties. They weren't going to build at any price anyway. Um, but the the numbers that are being thrown out there for costs, they're relatively similar, but there, there's some fairly significant differences. Um, what I find interesting is the expenses that they've given us and I've used. They've been all over the board. Okay. Now, to me, after you go through the initial capital outlay, the only expense you have other than turning it on and off is you got to keep the panels clean. Well, you got to pay your, your ground lease and your, your pilot. And uh, they have, you know, the O&M costs, uh, they range from 2% to, to the one guy tried to sell me in 20%. I said, 20%, that's 100 grand a year. What in God's name are you going to do for $100,000 $100, a year? It's right? a lot of mowing. Uh, yeah, it's a lot of mowing. So. Yeah. And, uh, and then I had the farmer who wanted me in the worst way to approve the pilot because he had the land lease, which was way more money than he was going to get by growing corn, but he was going to go grow corn between the rows. So he was going to get the benefit of Double still dip. having a crop. Dwarf yeah. corn. Yeah. Yes. I don't know. That's what he said. I, I didn't, didn't buy it. Maybe it was tomatoes. I don't Maybe know. it was. Huh. A lot of people want to put sheep in there. Yeah, that's a thought. Mm -hmm. You have to raise the panels up. I did ask one Bullets. company if they would consider hiring me to clean their panels. I was going to get a, you know, a flatbed uh, truck with a high <laughs> high velocity spray and just go down. And I said no. I don't even know how they do. But there's some. Hey, one other quick story. Then we're going. So, the town of Adams um, agreed with a company from North Carolina to put a um, solar array on their cap landfill, and they are the beneficiary of mm -hmm. net metering. So in the lease agreement, because there's a land lease and a power purchase agreement, the town is prohibited from going on the property. Okay, whatever, no big deal. Mm. So because it's a net benefit um, agreement, meaning um, the net benefit was $100,000, so you could take it as $90,000 in property tax and $10,000 in net metering benefit, vice versa, or any number in between. So the company did not care what kind of pilot, but we do have to have a pilot or full and fair cash value by DOR regulations. So I called this guy, and he, is, he didn't really care. So I'm talking to the town, I go, we haven't received any benefit from this. There's been no net metering credits. This is winter time. A company from North Carolina put the panel six inches off the ground. You know how much Boy. it snows in Adams in wintertime? 
yeah. panels were completely covered. Mm. You're yes. generating electricity. So I happen to call this guy back and he says, yeah, I don't understand it myself. But I said, well, I do. You got three feet of snow. You need to get up here and clean it. He says, oh no, town's responsibility. I said, oh no, I have the agreement right here. Town is prohibited from coming on the property. So until you come up or pay somebody to shovel off that snow, you're not selling any electricity and the town's not getting any net metering benefit. So my pilot is gonna be $90,000. I'm getting that money out of you one way or the other. Wow. Four days later, he had a crew shoveling it off. So. And putting post extenders? No. <laughs> oh, he never stuff. raised it up. So you, you oh deal gosh. with all kinds of companies. Yeah. Next Amp is actually, of all of them, they've been there since the beginning. They have done a number of projects for other people, and now they're doing a number for themselves. They're, I, they're, they're a good company. I consider them yeah. to be a reputable company. Yeah. yeah. So. All right, so what's our... Um, What's our new proposal here? If I would suggest we get back to them, they said 10, we'll, we'll offer them 11 at the 1%, but the battery will be at full fair cash value if and when they ever build it. Or they can have the deal as it's proposed. Why don't we go with 12? Oh, for the, for the second? Well, they're gonna come back at, at 11. So. But let them come back. Well, uh, that's fine. Let them come back. Okay. I agree, I agree with that suggestion, John. You mean 12 with no ba with, uh, tax of battery? Yeah, yes. 12 and tax So either, battery. either the original, yeah. originally yeah. keep the original, or mm -hmm. you can go with this, the 12 and 1% and... Um, how, how about that 1% per year? Yeah, well, yeah. We, they brought it up to 1.5. There's no reason to go back to 1. All right, that's fine. All right, so put in 1.5. Put a 12, a 12 one, uh, our original would be 13.5 plus what we said for processing, plus one and a half up, right? Right. Or we go to 12, one and a half, uh, and what's the other condition? The tax of battery. The processing, the they battery. dropped down to 3,000. The, the, the processing, they dropped down to 3,000. Oh, no, it's 10 grand. Yeah, we're not, that, that's yeah. nickel. Yeah, I'm I know. Yeah. That's peanuts. Yeah. I know, Absolutely. but simply another factor in the contract. Yeah, no, I, I, I just, I've read that and I go, yeah, I know you. <laughs> nice to get off of that, but you know. Uh, the processing is just a one time fee? Yeah. yeah. What I did is I started throwing it in because, um, well, you're going to pay me out of that, thank you, and um, you're going to have a legal bill. And frankly, the legal bill is going to be more than $10,000. It just is. I, I laugh, Koppelman and Page has done a ton of these. Mm -hmm. And I've used Koppelman and Page's template for the next community, and of course the community wants to have it reviewed first time through. And Koppelman and, they send and it Page, to Koppelman and Page. charge yeah, them seventy five hundred dollars to review their own document. I went, yeah, I should. They do. Lawyer. They do that a lot. Yeah. I've seen that happen yeah. a number of times. Well, if you call them on their stuff, they back they back down. Yes, they, they do. And, and that actually, did have, I did talk to Rick Holland one day, and I said, Rick, oh, Rick you wrote I've, this. I've dealt well, with Rick on other Koppelman matters. Huh? Would we be using couple and page? No, I mean, we'd no. be using our attorney, right? Oh, uh, well, yeah. with, with this situation, we could we could either use them or, or well, our town council. Uh -huh. yeah. yeah, our town council has worked. And frankly, down at uh, at at East Hampton on yeah. on, on on their situation. So he knows what's good. going on. And I I actually have the latest greatest template that I would say right. here. Let's start with this, so you don't have to start from ground zero. A uh, couple things. Um, there was there was a, a question about the difference between um, rated and installed capacity. Your your proposal, our proposal, we talked about rated capacity. They came back with installed capacity. The capacity is whatever uh, uh, the grid company says it is. That, that's a that's a yeah. finite number after it's installed. So whatever that number is is what it, what it's going to be. Um, so we might as well just say installed. Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. that that's mm -hmm. that's at least engineering. Yeah, uh, and and just well, in fairness to you, you, a lot of these, I, I've seen this happen. Yeah, we're anticipating six meg because we think we can use twenty acres, and because of mm -hmm. wetland issues or whatever, we're cut down to fifteen. So it's got to go to five. The economics remain the same. You know, you, your yeah. my, my, your yeah. cost yeah. per right. kilowatt. Mm -hmm. If it's five, it's not going to be w less money per kilowatt, it's going to be the same. You're just going to get fewer dollars because it's five as opposed to four as opposed to six. Yeah. 
and, and they're coming in at 5.8 something. Yeah, 5, 8, yeah. 6 is around, but they had 5.8. Yeah. And it written in DC, no AC, because AC is 30% cheaper. Mm -hmm. So um, they tried to pull that too. Oh, yeah, we'll agree to that. You know, 13.5, AC. No, DC. So, yeah. Because it's more. Well, and they, they were okay with it. Uh, just one uh, final detail. Um, we, we built some in. Yeah. yeah. Right. So, and, yeah. yeah. So whatever the, the what yeah. I write is in, in is yeah. whatever the tax situation in the community yeah. is how mm -hmm. you're going to receive yeah. your bill. Mm -hmm. um, and I also put in there and should it change, you'll be notified. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. yeah. Quarterly. So. Okay. Great. All right. Sounds good. Boy. Now, do you want me to communicate with him, or do you are you going to? Go ahead, please. Yeah. Okay. Go ahead. You you. All right, so let's go one more time. So I'll screw this up. So we're going to offer them the original proposal. Yep, uh, the thir original plus one and a half per year, right? The yeah. thirteen five plus the one and a half escalator. Okay. And the processing fee stays the same. Yeah, they're not going to go. For, they're going to. They're going to want the one percent back again. So let's go well, let's let's go. All right, so that's yeah. fine. And now the they second is twelve thousand. Right. At one point five. Right. For the solar array only. And the battery will be we'll taxable tax. uh, if it's built. Right. With all the be bells and whistles that go with the, the, the that clause. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that's. And those that, are lots of bells and lots of whistles, I might add. And, and the one and a half percent, right? We got that. Yeah. In, okay. uh, included in pilot language. Yeah, they they came back with one point five. Right. So yeah, yeah. that was their yeah. offer. They're they're right. they're going to be fine with. Maybe that. we should go to two. Yeah, <laughs> no, they're, they're, at the, they're going to say, well, hey, you gave yeah, us an yeah. offer of thirteen five at one. We yeah, counted ten at one and a half. We're, we're not going to take thirteen five at one and a half. You know they're not going to do that. And well, thirteen at thirteen five at one. They should have said, said yes and let us stop spending money on consultants and everything else. <laughs> I'm cheap. No pain, please. Uh, Phil, no. please, Phil. Well, no, that's what you say to him. <laughs> um, yeah, Our costs go up. Roy's, Roy's experience and advice yeah. is, is well worth Roy's, Roy's presence in this has made me feel better about the whole process, I well, think. Well, that's good. Uh, yes, sir. better tonight. Well, yeah. good. Yes. All right. Yeah. Um, it, it's been, it, yeah. the law is poorly written. It. Yeah. And uh, I suspect that in 1994, when they wrote the exemption, there was some thought to this was going to be, be put on people's houses on a solar hot water, mm -hmm. so therefore we're going to exempt it. I don't think they really envisioned the commercial solar operation yeah. that has come about because, because of the subsidy. And I think that's why you have the question about the exempt, because it would be assumed that if you put a solar array in a church, a church is exempt, you wouldn't be able to solar array. Right. So they didn't include that language. I really hope this gets cleaned up. And, as an, a parting aside, I expected more companies once the KTT decision came down, which was from June of 2015, that they would come in and say, "Well, no, we're not taking that offer. We're, you know, try to tax us." Mm -hmm. Absolutely, none of them have done that. Matter of most companies mm -hmm. don't even reference it. And in querying, in working for solar, I said, you know, "Why don't you do this?" They need a pro forma because they're borrowing money. And that pro forma has to specify exactly what the outlays will be, and that directly affects the amount of interest that they're going to pay on, on this property. So obviously it's to their benefit to get a lower number, but they need a number. Yeah, and, and they can frankly, collateralize these types of things and sell them as securities on the open market. one guy did say to me, you know, better the devil you know than the devil you don't. Absolutely. Because yeah. I said to one company, I said, well, here's what's going to happen. I'm going to tax you with $10 million. We're going to put two hundred thousand dollars in in our bank, in our overlay, and we're going to do that for three years because that's how long it's going to take for that appeal to go from the appellate tax board. Which means I'm going to have a six hundred thousand dollar war chest of your money to fight you with. <laughs> he didn't like that answer. Yeah. Right? So I I don't yeah. get Christmas cards for solar companies, <laughs> yeah. not so ever. So again, I apologize for being late. No I'm, problem. No problem. You're happy. Okay. <laughs> I think as long as you're happy, we're happy. He's. A master in the field sure. that gives superb advice and well grounded. Yep. That's great. Yep. We all are supporting that. Yes. Roy, thanks for coming in. I will talk to Ethan tomorrow. I'm sure he'll be anxious. Good seeing you. Good to see Thank you. Again. Thank you. Good luck. He will probably be at the reviews tomorrow. Yeah. Very good. Thank you. Very all right. Thank you. Guys, Thank you. have a good one. Thank you, Lee. <laughs> Okay, that was exciting. It was. It was very I, educational. I enjoyed that.
Now we go go back to the to the mundane mundane part of the. Uh, oh no no. no. It's, the update. It's Tom's update. No, it's well, still exciting. Not having any items anticipated. Right, that's good. So we're going to the update. It's always good not to have items anticipated. Uh, committee news. Um, uh, you, you'll see that there, there's a couple of... Th there's actually a plot line here. It's interesting. Under committees, the uh, Open Space Committee requested that the additional parking area at the South River Meadow that was created by the Highway Department be seated. Um, they also report that the stone memorial bench has uh, gone out for engraving, uh, and they're looking for a targeted completion date so a dedication date can be planned. They did speak with us about doing that over the Festival of the Hills, but they're, you know, it's still a little uh, fluid. Okay. The highway facility uh, committee has reviewed the plans for the highway storage barn and approved an advertised invitation for bids for the engineering and construction of the facility. The bids are scheduled to be open September 18th. Okay. Uh, in departmental work, the highway department clerk is resigning. I gather we haven't gotten uh, a letter yet to work at a local business. She was extraordinarily good with resident communication and will be greatly missed. Oh, yeah, I'm working yeah. with the highway superintendent to fill the position. Okay. Um, I received a note from a resident concerned about bears, specifically the fact that feeding them can make them unafraid of people and therefore potentially dangerous and liable to be shot if involved with people publicly. I forwarded her concern to the animal control officer for his response, uh, and he's referred me to DEP, and I'm uh, waiting for a phone call from them. Uh, one option the resident mentioned was creating a petition for a town meeting or an article prohibiting the feeding of bears. I understand Northampton has done that. I'm I'm thinking that a uh, little community communication might be the way to go with that. Mm -hmm. Sounds um, good. So I'm, uh, I followed up with the open space committee's sorry, concern sorry. about stilt grass and the highway department's mowing. The highway supervisor says the mower is not adjustable and may sometimes cut at ground level. He suggested the open space committee hire a landscaper to manage stilt grass in these situations. On an, uh, another highway open space committee note, the highway superintendent questions seating the parking area as it's meant to be for parking. Uh, I've not yet received the Conservation Commission's order of conditions. I don't know whether that's, um, I think that's a, a separate a separate matter, so um, we still have a little bit of a disconnect between whether we seed that area or whether we leave it, it gravel for parking. Is it parking? That It is intended to be for parking. Okay, then yes. why would we seed it? Right. Uh, that would be presumably to keep the sand keep dirt, the dirt from washing away. Washing if someone away. was there every day, um, I well, can say it, that that is, is self-seeded to a considerable extent already. Is it so, this, this mm -hmm. flat area? Yes, mm -hmm. a relatively flat. Okay. Yeah. If, so just uh, in the past couple yes. weeks, that is self-seeded to such an extent that it might not be a, an issue anymore. Mm -hmm. So okay. just take a look at it. Um, also, regarding the highway department, I'm working with the superintendent to create a policy for town departments and committees that would like to request assistance. Uh, I've scheduled the Town Academy sessions for Thursdays in October and November and went over the plan at a department heads meeting. I have the select board introduction down for the first meeting on October 3rd along with the general introduction in my own position. Um, I encourage all select board members to attend all the sessions, but this one especially. Uh, hoping people can make it. I realize any kind of scheduling is going to be like third Thursdays and things like that aren't going to work for you and, and that sort of thing. So how's the enrollment numbers look? <laughs> oh, we, we're we're. Uh, I, I think it would be futile to expect um, RSVPs, and even if some came in, it would probably be more misinformation than actual information as to how many people would show up. So I uh, I am encouraging. We will be encouraging. We'll be sending out a townwide mailing. Etc. So we're going to do all the publicity we can, and uh, see what happens. And then, uh, with any luck, word will spread. Uh, the team updating the hazard mitigation plan had its last full meeting. Various data is being gathered by staff. 
I will consult with the FERCOG in advance of a final public meeting, and the FERCOG can then revise the plan as necessary before submitting our final plan. Uh, finally, I brought in a Maya All One Health presenter, that's the employee assistance program they use, uh, for a harassment awareness program on Thursday, which was re well received by the 19 staff attendees. I thought that was a great Okay. Um, great attendance. Yeah. Uh, I plan to reach out to call staff with a similar program on a Wednesday training evening. I've spoken with Chief Baker and uh, Ambulance Director Vander on that. Good. Question about the stilt graph. So w what are they proposing Ron do differently? Janet came in and, and talked about that before. She was concerned that um, the level that was cutting too low and might actually be spreading the seed rather than cutting it down. I know she was here at the still grass issue. Yeah, right. right. So she wants it raised. She was wondering if it could be raised up a little bit or uh, I see. Yes. Yes. And um, apparently it is not adjustable. Um, and if they really, and so they may need a different plan for controlling still grass where it is growing along the highway um, because it needs a lot more attention than somebody doing all the roads in town is going to be able to give it. Okay. Okay, thank you, Tom. Uh, concerns of the selectmen. Do we have any concerns? Yeah, I heard a lot of people complaining about the noise in the general uh, con the construction project downtown. Babies are crying. Mm. Dogs are cat are 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 shaking. Okay. And, well, yeah. that's, a, we yeah, that's a state. Yeah. That's a state project. Yeah. But, you know. We're, that is a concern of the selectmen when people constantly complain. What about what, it. what are we going to do? Are we going to tell them to work more quietly? Um, no. Not, not fix the road. Not fix the no. road. No. But they should take the trash. They shouldn't just leave a trash bag filled with their lunch bags. They should actually take the trash bag with them over the long weekend and not just stash it behind the guardrail because that attracted. At skunks, according to some person. So, really? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. <coughs> mail. We got mail from um, a resident who basically wants us to support the two bills that are being proposed uh, by Jen Benson. Do you guys have? Have this, you know about this. But Jen Benson is coming out to Williamsburg to talk about her bills. Right. That, you know that's that's a flyer for that event. Yeah. Um, that just came in today. Okay. So I know about it. What's the bill? She's coming. Is it on the ninth? What does it say? The date on the on the poster? Yeah, yeah. I forget. Well, the second page is the information page. September 9th. Yeah. So Monday night. Yeah. It's a, it's. It's a problem for us. Oh yeah. no, it's a Monday night that we're we're, we're not off we're night. not in session that night. So. Yeah, that's good. Okay, I don't have any announcements. Anybody have any announcements? No. Okay, yes, that's good. yes. Oh, you do you have an announcement? Yes, next Tuesday at the Historical Society at seven uh, seven thirty p.m. Mark Fortier is giving a talk about the good old folks that used to be around his grandfather Ernie Stalen. It's great Conway stories. I wish I could be there, but I have a school committee. I have a conservation session. commission meeting that I, John, can we get FCAT to? I'm already doing it. You are going to do it? Good. All right. Great, because this will be a very popular yeah. event. Yeah. Good storyteller, well-loved guy. It, if you're taping it, you will enjoy it. Will it be somebody to interview on another occasion? It about? could be. You You decide All that, right. but I think so. I'd love to do another thing like what I did with Lil Spain out in the yeah. lately there. Good. Okay. Look into it. Any other announcements? No. Okay. Our next meeting is scheduled for September 16th uh, at 6 p.m. here in the town office. Great. Okay. Um, we have. Um, do we want to do our executive session? I do um, not have anything for that. I was expecting something. Okay. And I do not have anything. Okay, mm. so we're, we're not going to have that, so I'll make a motion that we adjourn. Second. All in favor? Yes. Aye. Okay. Thank you all. Thank you, John. Thank you, Lisa.